What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're having a look at floating UI, something that stays within your screen space as you can see over here over my character. Um, I used to have that over the sphere actually, but it's a it's actually in screen space as you can see on the left hand side of here. It's UI that moves in screen space and in the back over there, I have one that moves in a 3D canvas. I will show you that in a second. But today we're really interested in having stuff that moves in screen space. So let's get right into it. All right, so before I jump into following an object in the world space in screen space, I want to show you something because there's two ways of doing this. Um, one of them is having a 3D canvas. I have one right here. It's basically just like a normal canvas. However, you want the render mode to be in world space. What this gives you, it actually gives you a 3D object just like this and you can move it around like I'm doing right now. And it's actually, you know, it's in 3D space. So if you go over here, you're going to see that, you're going to see this, you can go there, you see above it. It's an actual 3D canvas. Um, and see, my character is in front here. Like, uh, There's a little bit of fighting issues. But let me show you why it's not going to be something we want to have all the time. Sometimes you want your UI to be on top of everything. So here is why. Assuming I have something that follows the sphere, I end up with something like this here. And as I'm following it around, well, you know, I'm kind of losing the text inside of my inside of my uh, cube over there. So sometimes that's not the option you want. And today I'm going to show you a different option, which is going to be very useful. It's an overlay um, that will always be visible. So here's the option. It is a UI object that's being placed directly in screen space. So it's always on screen space. If you have a look at the canvas itself, it's actually being displayed just like a normal UI and it's being displayed well on top of everything. Um, like UI should be. So well, let's talk a little bit about this one. First, I want to point out that this is isolated on a separate canvas. And that's very important to do if you have multiple of these or if you have a very heavy um, canvas for your UI. If you're moving something around every frame, like I'm doing right here, by the way, if you're moving something around every frame, then what you want to do is you want to put it on a different canvas because as soon as you move one single element, in a canvas, it redraws the whole thing. So assuming that over here under floating UI, we had like an image, we had like a health bar, we had all of that, we'd want to be moving them out to what we would call a static canvas. So those elements are not being redrawn as soon as I move this text. Also heads up going into this, you're going to notice that my sphere over here, it actually moves within my bounds. And if I exit, it still exists, like it's still actually being updated and moved. So you might want to look for a calling solution as well. Having that said, let's jump into the code. And today there ain't going to be any um, package because the code is again, very, very simple. Here is what I have. I have my sphere. So I have my UI element over here called sphere. Um, not really the best name could be something else, but that's basically this thing you see on the left over here. So I have a text from text mesh pro and then an arrow just beneath it. Um, this element has a script called follow world. And this one has a look at. So what am I looking at? We could be looking directly at the player. Yeah, let's actually try that. So I'm gonna drag and drop my player in here. And then I have an offset so I can modify how it looks in the game. So see right now, my offset is definitely not right. Here's what I'll do. I'll up it a little bit, say four. And I end up with something like that. So now I have something that points to this player at all time. Uh, something you might wanna do in your game, who knows? Okay, let's have a look at the code. Very simple code. You might laugh it off. This is what we need. We need the two field we just had to look at. We need a camera for your logic. Why? You'll see why in a moment. Um, and then I assigned my camera at the beginning by saying, hey, the cam that we declare over here, I did not really want to have um, a serialized field, did not want to drag and drop it because we might have multiple camera. Let's just do that with the main camera or even better, current camera. Up to you which one you choose. I always tag mine as main camera so I can use this no problem. Um, and in the update, this is the function right here. And this is what you want to be looking at and always, always using um, when you're doing a transition in between world to screen. So what we do is we take a position and then we say, hey, camera, take this world position and transfer it into a screen point. And that's actually where I'll be placing my UI. So what's that world position? It's the position of my player in this case, plus an offset that I define at the top in my field. 
and having this, this will translate into a screen position, so a pixel position in your screen. And then if it's not the same as last frame, I will go ahead and move it. Now, this check over here is related to what I was saying earlier about optimization. We don't want to move stuff so much in a canvas. And if we do, we want to isolate it. But what's even better is that if we're not moving at all, or like if the object is not moving at all, then let's just not redraw anything. Let's just not move this thing. So that's why the check is over here. And that's actually it for today. Not a very long episode, but before we end, I'd like to invite you and have a look under camera all the function you can actually use to transfer a coordinate from one, um, you know, from world to screen. You can also have, let's see, so screen to point, screen to viewport, which is a little bit different than screen, um, screen to world point. And then you can also do the backward operation. So say you have something like, well, we did world screen to point. So we gave in a world position, like our player's position, and then we got a screen position. But you could also do the opposite and say, hey, I see this in my screen over here, or my cursor is over there in my screen. What is the equivalent of that in world? We use that a lot when we're doing um, clicking and raycasts with the camera. So we ask our camera, where is cursor right now? This is my mouse position. And then it's going to cast a ray from the eye of the camera towards where you're pointing. Um, very cool stuff. And this is, as I mentioned, where we're gonna be ending today's episode. Very short one. But again, it's a quick tip I like to use and it's uh, something I wanted to show you guys. Yeah, okay. So yeah, this is actually where I'll be ending today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe, and uh, click on the recommended videos if you see any on the right hand side. What else could I, could I beg for? Oh, you can check out the Patreon and all the other link. That'd be nice. Other than that, I'll see you tomorrow and I hope you have a good day. Cheers.